नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस् गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू नदर एपिसोड ऑफ क्यूएनए धम्म क्यूएनए सेशन and today we will be discussing right action sama kamanda today is day 9 so uh, looking back uh, we've been doing uh, we've been discussing about uh, almost a uh, couple uh, factors of the noble uh, eightfold fact so samaditti sama sankalpa sama vacha and sama kamanda is the stage where uh, you you put your actions uh you know into practice now with samaditi you find out uh, uh you know you understand what actions uh, what actions should be better and in sama with sama sankapa you are developing <coughs> intentions uh, thoughts uh, uh, for uh, your understanding samavacha with samavacha you try to incorporate uh, the relevant appropriate uh, speech uh, uh, you know uh, aligning with uh, ditti sankalpa and then today and you are trying to put actions uh, based on ditti sankalpa vacha into practice so that is how we have to see uh, your uh, what do you call uh, path so there is a direct connection between uh, all these factors so so even though we understand that uh, there are three right actions but uh, these uh, actions they start uh, with an understanding about uh, the noble path right so if you understand the noble path what you call by samaditti at that point you start uh, thinking that is called samma sankalpa and then you are uh, before you act uh, upon those actions you are trying to uh, you know uh, put them into speech and then you are trying to put them into action so this is what we call by samma kamanta now samma kamanta uh, to many people uh, they might uh, see it can be a confusion with uh, pali words because there's kam and kamanta is kamanta a business some people they are trying to you know sort of understand what this is all about so uh what uh, i wanted to explain at the beginning is uh, let's take a look at of the basic things about uh, uh kama now you know uh, it is clearly stated that uh, sama kama means uh, abstaining from uh, killing uh, panadipata uh, abstaining from uh, stealing adinadana abstaining from uh, what you call sexual uh, misconduct that means uh, kama is a mitchacha uh, although we understand that these three are the uh, abstinences but uh, uh, we have to understand the basic concept of uh, kama now uh, up until the time the buddha was born uh, and, and and buddha was trying to uh, disseminate his teachings uh, the belief that many people had about kama because kama primarily comes from hinduism uh, they believed that kama is basically action so uh, let's say uh, i i do something and then uh, they just uh, notice observe only my action they never understand my intention about that particular doing let's say uh, you probably uh, do a visible thing that that might espouse a harmful effect on somebody and they 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 took it uh, as kama but in buddhism kama is not the mere action kama is the intention now uh, i will give you a very simple uh, example uh, take an infant right now an infant uh, basically uh, and seemingly moral right because infant does not uh, kill infant does not steal infant does not uh, you know uh, 
engage in sexual misconduct. Uh, infant does not lie. Infant does not uh, uh, take uh, what you call uh, beverages and food that uh, will cause uh, heedlessness. So uh, on the surface level, the infant is uh, highly moral, but it is not. So that is why Buddha says uh, mere abstinence, uh, what do you call it? Now, uh, the, the, the visible refraining, what do you call it? Missible, visible, uh, you know, uh, refraining from those particular activities are not taking you to sila. So sila in Buddhism means that you are refraining with intentions. You have intentions of not doing them and then uh, your actions will be the same. So that's why we have to understand the intentional part when we talk about sila. <clears throat> so without understanding the uh, intentional part of someone's particular abstinence, particular refraining, uh, we can say that person has sila. So, uh, you know, uh, we can exactly, you know, we can precisely understand uh, what the intentions are uh, for someone's, uh, you know, uh, abstinence. But uh, in the real sense, Buddha says, sila is not just the physical abstinence. It is, it is more about intentional abstinence so that you are not uh, doing it physically too. Uh, otherwise, uh, infants uh, are also very moral. They also have a lot of sila, but it is not, right? Okay. Karma. Now, Hindu uh, philosophy, we understand they, they have this karma. So they say whatever the action that causes come. But in Buddhism, Buddha says, no, karma is chetana ham bhikkavi karma vadami chetaitva karma karuti kaya vachai manasa. So uh, it is basically uh, intention. So the volitional part uh, makes up uh, the real action. Sorry, real karma. It's not just the uh, activity that you can see in you and uh, in other people. But, uh, you know, there's a tricky thing that uh, people might misuse uh, because we never know what uh, the real intentions behind uh, everyone's activities, everyone's, uh, I would say, good things and bad things. Because we think, we perceive it to be good or bad, but we never know what is uh, going inside of their mind especially uh, their intentions. So basically, kamma means intentional activity. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty hard for us to understand in terms of what uh, could be the real ulterior motive of many people's wrongdoings uh, and perhaps uh, good things too. But we know if we are really honest to us, true to us, uh, we can generally understand, oh, I have intention in you know, in doing all my uh, speech part, uh, activity part, and my thought part. Okay. Now, before I jump into some comment, I'm trying to find out a background, uh, you know, uh, kind of understanding about uh, kamma, because, because otherwise people might not understand what is kamanta, you know, action. So, samma kamanta, the right action, and micha kamanta, the wrong action. So, I'm trying to see... Uh, Kama as a as a uh, you know uh, connected uh, you know to samma kama at the beginning. So now when we talk about kama, a lot of people misunderstand. It's kind of a long uh, uh, you know long uh, debate. Uh, if you take a look at uh, what are the things going around uh, this concept of kama. Because people think differently and then there are different philosophies and there are different experiential and empirical thoughts about come. Now, in one of the suttas, Buddha says there were three main, uh, what do you call, thoughts, ideas uh, about uh, come at the time of the Buddha. Now, some people believe that uh, everything that they experience now, they come from previous come. Buddha said uh, it is a wrong idea called Pubbe Kata Hetuad. So Pubbe Kata Hetuad means everything we experience now, they come from the previous Kama. Buddha said it is not correct. It's incorrect. Then some people believed uh, a second uh, sort of, second kind of uh, uh, idea about Kama, which is called 
uh, is there is someone who is granting us good or bad or good and bad there's a kind of a superior person who's doing that and buddha said no there's no someone who is granting you right so there is so you can say that everything every experience they come from the past life or you everybody is granted good and bad experiences are, uh, by the power of a kind of a person superior person so so not current to the buddha and then some people believed the idea called uh, ahetuka apache vada is it, is it correct yeah ahetuka apache vada ahetuka apache vada means uh, uh, you know there is no conditionality everything every experience arises uh, you know uh, ad hoc i would say randomly so they all are randomized so uh, you know there is no uh, conditional there's no cause and effect uh, principle behind our experience Buddha said Buddha rejected all these three Buddha said uh, there are certain experiences uh, we uh, you know uh, go through because of the past karma but not all the experiences we go through uh, from the past karma we have to keep that in mind and there is no superior person who is controlling us that's you know utterly rejected and then uh, there's there may be some events that can happen to us uh, you know uh, randomly so i mean it is not uh, you know it is not uh, discarded so but not everything okay but this randomization can happen through a process of conditionality because if if there is no conditionality that means uh, those phenomena cannot be uh, included in the Parisampad. So all the phenomena, they are part of Parisampad. So we can't say things happen random, but there may be certain things that can happen accidentally. But uh, Buddha said, uh, you know, uh, the reasons behind Kama is uh, multifaceted, uh, multifactors. So uh, there are things that you experience from past Kama, but not everything. Uh, and there are things that uh, happen because of, uh, you know, germination process. Uh, if you can take a look at of photosynthesis of a tree and et cetera, et cetera. There are things that can happen because of karma too. There are things that can happen because of your mind, the dynamics of your mind and mental factors. There are things that can happen because of the universal uh, things. I would say I am, I was born and uh, I am, uh, aging now and I'm getting sick at a certain point and be sick and I'm, I'm gonna die so, so are you right so I mean these things happen not because of a higher deity or a higher person because it's a part of the universality so anyway so I'm trying to trying to tell you that karma is uh, the, the, the source of karma is kind of multifaceted so it's not like one source can karma be neutralized yes it's a, it's a whole bunch of uh, you know different thoughts about it so I, I, I would skip that because uh, you can neutralize karma I mean I'm not telling you that do bad things and you can neutralize mitigate I'm trying to say that if you have done anything wrong anything akusala unskillful do more good karma so that you can uh, neutralize your uh, bad karma doesn't mean that you can do bad karma new bad karma don't create new bad karma there's a way you can Neutralize your past bad karma. Okay, here we jump into the Samma Kama. Now, I I discuss about Kama because uh, Kama Mantha has a part of Kama. Okay, so these, these you know, uh, things that we talk under Samma Kama, they all are present life related things. So they are not previous Kama. So whatever the things you do in this life, they are becoming a part of Kama Mantha somehow uh, okay the question is what what is extremely important in the path okay now a lot of people might think samaditi because we philosophize we try to uh, idealize we try to you know cognize about how to start my path yes samaditi but if you take a closer look at this whole path Ditti, Sankappa, Vacha, Kammanta, Aji, Vayama, Sati, Samadhi, the, what do you call, the acting part, the, the, I mean, uh, 
uh, you know, more or less the acting part is Samma Kamat. It is not Samma Vayama Sati Samadhi. Uh, your actions make up a lot in your path. So this, so that, so that's why I'm saying even you have Samma Ditti as a forerunner, Sankappa Vacha Kamant makes up a lot, makes up a huge part of your path because, because not killing, not stealing, not having sexual misconduct. Uh, they are what we call by Samma Kamma. So this is where people get stuck. People, uh, you know, are always, always uh, you know, uh, misunderstood, misperceived, or uh, gone wrong, gone astray. So I'm telling you, this is the extremely important factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. Because this is where you're going to create, construct activities. I mean, physical, visible activities. That's why I'm telling you that be very careful because you won't be able to keep to Samma Kamanta if you don't have a proper uh, practice starting from Samma Ditti Sankapavaja. But when it comes to Samma Kamanta, you are uh, creating the best out of you, are creating the worst out of your activity. So that's why I'm telling you this is such a very interesting point so please keep in mind please uh, take good care of your actions because those actions they arise uh, some other, as, a, as a consequence of uh, practicing uh, well uh, uh, you know with samaditi samasaka samma vacha that's why it's it could be the extremely important factor of the path now there's a traditional breakdown uh, of uh, the, the, the eightfold, uh, you know, uh, path. I would say noble eightfold path. That is what we call by, you know, a teaching uh, given in the Maha. I would say uh, Maha, either Maha Chattali Sakasutta uh, Chula Vidal Sutta, uh, where in which we understand that uh, the whole path is divided into three. Aggregates. Now we call them actually Silak Kanda, Samadhi Kanda, and Panyak Kanda. Now it is said that Samma Ditti and Samma Sankappa they represent Panya part, Piston part. Now take a look. You are starting from Samma Ditti and Sankappa. Now this is what you call by wisdom, Panya. Now, you might perhaps think, why don't I start from Sila? Why don't I start from Samadhi? No, you are starting from Panya. Because you should, you need some level of Panya to start with. You might not get up to that higher Panya. Panya has a couple meanings, right? Sutta maya, Chinta maya, Bhavana maya Panya. So, uh, the, the, the wisdom that you are earning through listening, Chinta uh, maya Panya, Wisdom you are acquiring through rationalization and uh, bhavana me panya. Wisdom you are acquiring through the development of your mind. So, sutami panya means that you you at least need a sort of listening to uh, the dhamma. Right? Could be a internet uh, listening or maybe a radio listening. Maybe it might be perhaps uh, you know reading and all this helps uh, you know help you to uh, start with the uh, fundamental level of Panya. This is what you call by Ditti and Sankap. So, uh, when you practice the Noble Eightfold Path, you start from Panya, not from Sila Samadhi. That's uh, the most important thing. And then, what happens? Then you are going slowly, gradually. That is what you call Vacha Kammanta Ajiva. That is called Sila. After Panya, after a certain background of Panya only, you are going into seal. Now, a lot of people, they never know this idea. They start from seal and they are looking for Panya. Actually, you should have a little <clears throat> uh, amount of Panya. This is what we call by Ditti and Sankappa. And then under seal, what we, what we are practicing in the Noble Eightfold Path is Samma Vacha, Samma Kamanta, Samma Aji. So, Vacha be. Sama Vacha we discussed already last week, uh, speech, right speech, and Sama Kamma means right action, which is what we've been talking today. And Sama Aji means right living. Uh, that is what we're going to be uh, discussing next week. So 
this is what we call by sealer part of uh, the noble eightfold path. So panya part, sila part, and then only you practice the samadhi part. Samadhi part includes samma vayam, samma sati, samma samadhi. So they are the sort of uh, the, the the last uh, level of, I would say, the final level of the eightfold uh, path, noble eightfold path. So. You have to start with some level of panya, diti sankapa, samma diti and samma sankapa, and then you are moving slowly towards samma uh, vacha kamanta ajiva, then you are tapping into samma. So, this is how we're gonna process. So, now the thing that you need to understand is that the noble eightfold path is nothing but the development of three disciplines. So we call it Sila Samadhi Panya, but I would say Panya Sila Samadhi. This, I, I would like to say it is Panya Sila Samadhi, uh, Sila Samadhi Panya. So you start from some level of Panya and then you practice some level of Sila and then you practice some level of, sorry, you, you practice some level of Panya, then you practice Sila, not some level of Sila, and then you practice Samadhi and then again you practice the higher level of Panya, which is not uh, what we understand normally. So Panya, Sila, Samadhi, and then again Panya. This is how uh, you need to practice the uh, Noble Eightfold Path. So our uh, topic for today, which is uh, what we call by Samma Kamadhi, is a part of Sila, but now we have a, we have a certain level of Panya. That is why we're tapping into uh, Ditti, and then Sankappa, and then Vacha, and then today Kamadhi, right? So, because uh, some uh, vacha, kamanta, ajiva, they all fall into sila part. What is samma, kamanta? What is right action? Abstaining from taking life, abstaining from stealing, abstaining from unchastity. This is called right action. So, we know that uh, now this is uh, something very important because when it comes to, now people might think then, what is the kind of sexual misconduct for a monk or a nun? That is celibacy. Now, for lay people like you, you are trying to, uh, you are trying not to step on, step on to the dear relationships that you uh, see in other people because it's not about uh, sexuality. A lot of people think it's sexuality. It's not homosexuality. It's not about heterosexuality. It's not about you know, you know A B C C all that. It's Y C. It's about Kind of a promise that you are not stepping over uh, also to other dearly friend relationships of other people so that is what you have to understand not about okay what kind of a sexuality uh, do i need to practice it's, it's not <laughs> what is meant by karmism chachara okay so basically uh, speaking sama kamanda means abstaining from taking life taking abstaining from stealing abstaining from sexual misconduct for the lay people and then celibacy sorry practices celibacy is for the monastic what's the relation to the other factors okay what's the relation what's the relation of samma kammanta to the other factors we we already discuss we also we always discuss this uh, you know interconnectedness of particular uh, you know what you call uh, factor uh, to other factors let me see and how is right view the forerunner one discerns wrong action as wrong action and right action as right action so that means in order for you to understand what is samma kammanta and what is micha kammanta you need to have samadhi it's pretty clear that's a part of panya with, with samaditi, you understand this is uh, killing, this is not killing, this is stealing, this is not stealing, this is sexual misconduct, this is sexual conduct, this is uh, celibacy, this is uh, not celibacy. So you need samaditi. So that means uh, samaditi is a part of uh, practicing a good level of uh, kind of a, uh, you know, holistic level of uh, samma kamant. That is one thing. One tries to abandon wrong action and to enter into right action. This is one's right effort. 
okay what does it mean that means you need sama sama vaya once you understand what you need supposed to do with right right view samaditti then you need sama vaya now this applies to sama vacha also right now for example i would say you use sama ditti to distinguish what is good what is bad and then you once you figured out then you need sama vaya right effort to continue the practice whatever speech right speech or right action right living and then one is mindful to abandon wrong action and to enter and remain in right action not even uh, right uh, effort is helpful you also need right mindfulness to stay consistent now this is uh, kind of a big thing to men even though they know this is good and bad even though they try to be effortful about the particular act but they are losing their mindfulness stamp they are kind of swaying all the time that is why we need samma uh, sati as well so samma ditti samma vayama samma sati they are all they all are actually uh, interwoven and they are all uh, helpful towards uh, the practice of the individual factors thus these three qualities samadhi to right view sama ajiva right effort sorry sama vaya right effort and sama sati right mindfulness run and circle around right action okay. run and circle around right action. that means sama ditti sama uh, vaya sama sati they all are a must uh, with sama vacha sama kamata Okay. What is the connection of Samma Kamanta to five precepts? Okay. Now, what are the five precepts? We already discussed, uh, you know, five precepts uh, extensively in our uh, Q&A session. I, I think we, we talked about uh, almost all five precepts. You can go back uh, into our Facebook discussions and I already uploaded onto uh, YouTube as well. Not killing Panadipata Viramani, uh, not stealing uh, Adinadana Viramani, not uh, sexually misbehaving Kamasimichachara Viramani, not lying Musavana Viramani, not taking uh, food and beverages uh, so that you are heed, you, so you are causing yourself heedlessness so that you can make the sound judgment that is called by Suramere Madatana Viramani. Now, what is the connection of these five to the noble eightfold path i will tell you now when you take a look at our samma kamanta we can easily see the first three precepts what do you call by panatipata adinadana and kamasmichachara then what happens to uh, musavada and suramiri musavada is a part of samma vacha the one the factor that we we discussed last week what about suramiri is there a uh, Factor called Suramire in the Noble Eightfold Path? No. But Suramire Majjit Madhattana can be a part of Samma Sati. Because if you are mindful, you will never, uh, you know, uh, consume any uh, beverage or food so that you won't have any, uh, you know, uh, heedlessness. Because if you are mindful, you are not into those things. If you are mindful, you are not into uh, those kind of uh, beverages and food. Because you are very mindful, right? It's not that you are not drinking. It's not that you are not taking alcohol. It is what we call by our mindfulness. I don't want any food. I don't want any beverage that can harm my mindfulness. Because I'm mindful now, I want to keep it consistent so that I'm not into any food or beverage. Not even those alcoholic stuff also, but also even the normal food that you eat. Right? If you don't know the moderation, then you are breaching the fifth precept, Suramir. Even if you eat a couple of dishes of rice, you will be uh, sleepy, drowsy. You know, you know that you are not supposed to eat that much. So uh, you can understand now all the five precepts, they are a part of the Noble Eightfold Path. The fifth one is what we don't see exactly, but it is a part. It can be a part of the summer. Sorry, uh, Samasati, right mindfulness. Now, 
on the other hand if you if you really observe you know the precepts these especially the the three uh, layers of some come up in a different level you can understand that it is not it is not to be taken like not killing not stealing not misbehaving why don't we take in the positive way? A lot of people they talk the reverse order, right? You know, what do you call in the psychology people talk about reverse psychology. People might say, I don't know like they, how they advise their kids, you know, don't touch, don't touch the plug. He might get uh, electrocuted, but the, but the child is going to do it, right? Uh, sometimes people say the opposite. You can touch it or whatever, which is not good. Sometimes people use the reverse psychology. I mean, I mean, we have to protect everyone. So they use the reverse psychology to, uh, you know, uh, to, to protect the people, to protect their people. So in, in this case, I'm saying, why don't we look at all these precepts, this disciplinary stuff from a positive point of view, not like not killing, not stealing, not misbehaving, not like, why don't we talk about respecting life as the first precept, generosity as the second precept and, uh, you know, a sexual conduct, conduct as the third precept, which is more pleasant, right? Which is more pleasant, more uh, harmonious. I mean, this is what we want to talk about. We have to make discussions, everything, uh, what do you call, you know, pleasant and, you know, uh, nice and comfortable, right? So it is something to think about. So uh, respecting life as the first uh, part layer of the summer. So we had to respect everybody's life. Now, to, in today's world, you know, people are suffering going through uh, this pandemic, right? Some people don't want to wear masks. Uh, not, they might think about their rights. But I I mean, I, I and you might think differently, you know, in a way, you know, we had to protect other people. That's why we have to wear a mask. We have to protect other people. Because not because I can, I cannot, uh, I don't want to use a mask, but because I wear it to protect other people. I don't want to transmit to other people, right? So this is respecting life. This is Panatipata, right? Just a small droplet can cause uh, someone to, you know, have a danger in their life. So this is, this is how we have to think about, not just not killing. Generosity. You know, like uh, as early as the pandemic hit, uh, in many places, people started panic buying, right? And then stockpiling, you know, but uh, now we understand we should not panic buy and uh, stockpile because we, we know that other people really need, uh, you know, they need uh, their essentials too, right? So, uh, you know, generous thinking, generosity is not just giving food to somebody. You have to be generous in your thoughts, your ideas, sharing caring all these things are involved in your genera generosity part not just uh you give something to someone right it's a kind of a bigger concept sexual conduct okay this is something that a lot of people uh misunderstand now buddha didn't want to say that everybody should have a certain kind of a sexual relationship especially for lay people he didn't say that he didn't say uh you know, the homosexuality or heterosexuality or whatever, whatever other sexuality is what he meant by He said, you should never step over to other people's dear relationships. That is what he meant. Nothing else. It could be uh, whatever, whatever. But Buddha said, never ever try to steal other people's dearly friendships, dearly relationships. That is really bad. So that's what the Buddha meant by the a third layer of the Samma Kamat. Now, uh, he also talked about, uh, uh, you know, uh, how does uh, sealer affect, uh, you know, this is part of sealer, right? So, uh, you know, although we understand that we, all, we need to be mindful, we, we, we're supposed to be mindful, but because of the hurried situations, pressured situations, they can actually take us to unmindful decisions, 
they, they can push us into different unnecessary boundaries. I mean, this is something that we have to be very careful. You know, we, we all like to be mindful, but sometimes, you know, uh, you know, without our noticing, uh, probably we might be uh, pushing to unnecessary, you know, hurried situations, I would say, uh, in other words, I could say pressure, pressured situations where we don't understand what should I do, what I'm supposed to do. That is where you have to find out this vipassana attitude. I mean, gotta gotta look at everything as they are, not as we are. So, if you can figure out, if you can draw the line between uh, the vipassana and non-vipassana context, then we know where we should stay and then be mindful continuous not just one day continuous mindfulness mindfulness that is going all the time so at that point only you you will be emotionally positive and uh, what you call more or less lucid rational i mean you're, you're gonna be more or less lucid rational and and emotionally positive you are you actually you are acting out from goodwill uh, rather than ill will so this is this is what we have to understand a lot of people they say i am a good person but because of this hurried situation because of this pressured situation i i tended to do this particular bad thing i mean this is what you have to be very careful i mean you can't excuse <laughs> by looking at these things looking at a certain situation that you never expected you are you should be ready for whatever situation, whatever may come to you. You are here, you are right here. You know what to do. You are mindful. You are taking time. I, I'm always trying to tell people that slow down, slow down in your life. When you slow down, you can see a lot. If you don't need to, if you don't think you're not, you're not going to slow down. You will never see the bigger picture of the particular hurried situation pressured situation so slow down a little bit uh, i mean it's not like you're taking one hour two hour take time before you speak take time before you act out that will really help you to find out what i'm supposed to do so basically right action i would say samma kamanta is not a bunch of prescriptions now a lot of people think like uh, uh, in other religions you know, commandments you know whatever whatever right like in you know, you know, in the 19th century, we, 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 we understood about the Victorian Christianity and all that. So, Samma Kamath, what you call uh, right action, is not a prescription. It is an intentional activity. So, we are trying to, uh, you know, use Samma Aditya to figure out what is the right action what is the wrong action and then we are using samma vayama to stay consistent in our uh, practice uh, in samma kamant also we are using samma sati to stay consistent with our mind so this is not a prescription this is kind of a uh, an, an activity that you are doing with your conscious self you understand what's happening uh, around beyond you and you know what you are supposed to do uh, Regardless of hurried situations, pressure situations, you, are, you know what, need, what you need to do. You know your boundaries. You are not trying to step out of your boundaries, especially, uh, you know, respecting life, uh, generosity, uh, and uh, sexual co conduct. So these are, the, these are the boundaries. And you are not exiting. You are not stepping out of those boundaries. Dhamma folks, uh, I couldn't tell you if you have any questions uh, that arise from this discussion or any other question related to this discussion, please uh, put them as comments, uh, you know, in the comment section. So I will get to them finally. Okay, so when we talk about the, f uh, the first layer, the first part of Samma Kamanta, respecting other people's life. Now, what are the teachings that Buddha talk about this thing? Buddha always said to us that you, you, you yourself know that you are afraid of death. I mean, if you're really concerned about you, if you really take a look at how you think. 
and you are afraid of violence you don't like violence so are others no living being does especially the intelligent people right i don't know i mean there are intelligent beings who might do bad things too but but normally yeah, we understand that we never like violence we never like uh, torturing we never like assaulting other people right although there could be uh, you know perpetrators but we want to see that in a compassionate context we want to uh you know convince people this is not the way to act out on this particular event we, we need to uh, create a uh, you know uh, society where people understand everything with a very conscious mindful compassionate heart not like you did this you're gonna be this and that uh, that was all thinking now people think differently about uh, you know everybody those who do bad things and good things so we want to protect everyone we want to make sure everyone is safe so you know on the other hand uh, you know buddhism is more concerned about uh, killing part you know we are we are not supposed to kill uh, buddhism is not I, I can't say buddhism is not concerned about the death because buddhism always says to us that we are we are going to die right so buddhism is not that concerned not that much concerned about the death one day because we are all supposed to die one day right but what buddhism is more emphasized more concern is not killing part we should we are not supposed to kill right so that's very interesting now if you can take a look at of uh, things like uh, uh, euthanasia like you know in the, in the modern uh, medical context we know that a lot of people they are struggling sometimes you may have a hard you have you may have to make a hard decision like your mom and dad you may have to make a decision about euthanasia but the thing is if we think about the buddhist perspectives it's a hard thing because we can't uh, kill anyone we can't kill any being right mm -hmm. we can't do that so you know that is what we understand by uh, not killing perspective okay What about stealing? Now, we uh, discuss about uh, not stealing, I would say, generosity. Now, you know, if you, if you can look at the bigger picture of, I would say, zooming out of uh, stealing part, you might perhaps think stealing is something like a big thing, like, a, like money and all that. But if something is not given to you, Let's say it is a pen or it is a pencil, it is a book. You might perhaps think it's a big company, like a lot of people can have a lot of things. But the problem is this particular activity, even that is a small, tiniest thing like a pen or pencil, the moment you steal it, what happens is that that particular activity demeans you. The moment you take it, that demeans you, your consciousness your true value because this is not about the pen pen might be not uh, that valuable kind of a trivial thing at some point it's not the company it's you your true consciousness your true self so that particular activity that even that small stealing demeans your true consciousness this is the most important part so you all have dignity i have dignity you have dignity so it's not about that particular small thing, right? So this is how we can uplift all of us. So we are not trying to, you know, uh, think that uh, stealing is stealing only when it is uh, something that is big or that is more valuable. It could be even it could be even a small thing, maybe a pencil, maybe a, a small item. The problem here is not the item but uh, the particular activity so the particular activity will destroy your dignity it will demean you because uh, when that particular activity demean you uh, then what happens is that uh, you will lose your true consciousness true self that is why buddha says 
never ever think about stealing even a small thing about of anybody because that particular thing will demean yourself will 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 harm your true consciousness which is not a good thing so that you are always looking at uh, even the small type of stealing also a bad thing right that is your consciousness even a small thing shouldn't be stolen which is not given to you so if you are if you actually working towards kind of a uplifting mentality this way you are also going to uh walk away from conniving scheming plotting uh i would say subterfuge all all these forms of swindling all these forms of uh, you know stealing right stealing is not just an just just an item it could be you are trying to steal someone's uh you know abstract stuff to fame credit popularity all that it all can be uh you know stealing it, you know it might not be the exact stealing but it can be uh, a kind of a form of uh, stealing so if you are not if you are not doing any of these forms of stealing you are uplifting yourself that is what you want that is what you should be uh, you know working towards because my life your life uh, is very precious we should not spend this precious life on trivial stuff by uh, committing you know panatipata dinadana o kamisamicha chara i would say killing stealing any form of killing any form of stealing any form of any form of uh, sexual misconduct is samma kammanta connected to compassion and mindfulness yes because if you are really compassionate you will never kill other people so you are compassionate if you have a true heart if you have empathy you will never go into uh, killing so empathy and compassion they are interwoven with the, uh, i would say they are they go in tandem with samma kammat what about uh, uh, stealing if you really uh, have compassion you will never steal other people's stuff if you if you really have compassion you will never steal other people's uh, dearly relationship romantic relationships or uh, i would say loyal relationship committed relationships is samma kamata connected to mindfulness yes you can't uh, do any of these uh, samma kamata layers activities without mindfulness you always have to be there are people who will not do uh, michas kamata i would say who will uh, abstain from uh, killing stealing sexual misconduct just for a day or two right like the people who do it only once in a month or something but it is not just one month or sorry one day practice you have to keep it going right so then mindfulness is what helps you to do so is samma kammanta a part of mental factors yes now if you look at abhidhamma uh, in abhidhamma we talked about uh, chetasikas right in the chetasika section we know that there are 24 chetasikas i i would say sorry uh, the beautiful good chetasikas there are 14 bad chetasikas so one of the good chetasikas we call sorry three of the good chetasikas they come from uh, uh, noble eightfold path we call them viratis samavacha samma kamanta samma aji we don't see others in here so samma kamanta is a part of Uh, what do you call uh, sobhana chetasikas i would say good chetasikas so it is a part of good chetasikas not even samma kammanda but also samma vacha and samma ajiva okay any questions uh, from your side let me see yeah i will give you a minute have questions please post your questions in the comments about samma kamanta huh? right action okay while i'm waiting to hear from you i really want to re uh, uh, reiterate about something i said in buddhism 
Seal. Now, Sama Kamma is a part of Seal. Sama Kamma, I would say, is not a prescription. It is an intentional activity. So, if you think that, uh, you know, at the end you might take it as a part of Seal, right? Because you can see Pancha Seal uh, in Sama, many of all these Pancha Seal parts uh, in the factors. Act. I mean, here you can see three factors, uh, you know factors uh, in the Panchasila. So Buddha says Sila, uh, which is the big concept of uh, Samavacha Kamatajiva, is not just keeping away from killing, stealing, sexual misconduct. Right? Not even that. You need that too. You also need a mental refraining from these three. Let's say you are not killing, but what if you are trying to kill people in mind? That is not seal. You are not stealing, but what if you are trying to mentalize, visualize you kill you stealing other people's stuff? That's something different. You are keeping away from stepping over to uh, into other people's dearly relationships, but what if that you are mentalizing? How can I get that uh, woman, man, <laughs> right? How can I get him? How can I get her into me? Although she's in a committed relationship, probably you can mentalize. You know, you are not doing that, but probably you can mentalize. That is what I say. Buddha said clearly, that is not sealer. I mean, just walking away from those things uh, or keeping away from those things uh, physically, they could be a part of the sealer, but it's not the full sealer. Full sealer is that you are trying to do it with your intentions as well, your intentional part as well. That's why I always use this example called infant. If you take an infant, like a baby, babies don't uh, kill, steal, misbehave, uh, and lie, and then uh, doesn't take or don't take uh, alcohol, or what's it, food and beverages, uh, right? So that they are not being a sound judgment. So they, they don't take anything, they don't do anything. So can we tell that the babies have a lot of seal? The infants, they have seal? No, they don't have seal. The seal is this intentional part. So intentional part makes up a, a bigger uh, you know, area of our seal. I mean, you, you need that physical part, but physical part alone doesn't say that you have seal. You must have the intentional part. So it's a hard thing because we can't say what other people having in their mind while they are walking away, keeping away from the bad things, right? So that's why we uh, always ask people to uh, be true to yourself. Be very true. Be very honest to you. This honesty, uh, truthfulness to you is the most important part in the Buddhist stage, especially when it comes to seal. Okay, let me see any questions here. I don't see any questions here, so let me uh, wrap this up by sharing good karmas, okay? So may all the good karmas we've been accumulating so far be transferred to all the departed relatives, nyatis. May they be happy and peaceful. May they attain supreme bliss of nirvana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Idam me nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatiyo. Idam me nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatiyo. Idam me nyati nang hotu sukita huntu nyatiyo. May all the good karmas uh, be shared by all the deities, nagas, devas, and nagas. May they be happy and peaceful. May they protect and bless all of you for good health, uh, long life. Some people don't like this term called by long life, they like quality life. What if I live longer <laughs> with a lot of sicknesses? Quality life and prosperity, everything that you expect in your good heart. May all you be protected by deities and nagas. May they also attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Ittavata cha ammehi sambatan punya sampadan sabbe deva anumudan pu sabbe bhuta anumudan pu sabbe satta anumudan pu sabbe sang patti siddhya aka satta cha bumatta deva naga mahintika punyantang anumuditva chirang rakhang tulukasasanam chirang rakhang tulisanam 
Chirang Rakang Tumang Paranti. Finally, let's make a great wish. May all the good karmas we've been accumulating in all these ways be helpful for all of us to attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. This is the final uh, wish uh, through the eightfold or tenfold noble path. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Now I'm going to be blessing you with a couple more stanzas. Please receive the blessings. Abhivadana silis nichan vadha pacha inu chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayuvannu sukham balang ayura rukya sampatti sagha sampatti me vache atu nibbana sampatti iminati saminchatu sadhu sadhu. Dhamma folks, uh, uh, I haven't been able to conduct uh, any interviews <laughs> last couple of weeks because I've been very busy. And uh, there are a couple of people, a lot of people uh, in line for interviews, professors and different people. So I uh, will be taking them into, bringing them into discussions, Dhamma Pari is a, uh, you know, uh, series. And please stay tuned, then I will uh, give you ample notice, I guess. Hope I can do that. Uh, yeah. So uh, also, uh, please continue to take care of you because things are not still okay in many parts of the world. And I wish everyone uh, be well, happy, and peaceful. Everyone take care of their life all the time. Also, they also respect other people's lives by taking care of them, by uh, giving them safety. Have a good night and have a good day uh, ahead of you. Thank you.